Four elements make up around 95% of the mass of most living things. These four elements are carbon, nitrogen, oxygen and hydrogen. This video will look at two of these elements, carbon and nitrogen, and how they're recycled through natural cycles between living and non-living components of the environment. The section on carbon is required for both higher and foundation tier exam papers, whereas the nitrogen cycle part of this video is only needed if you're taking the higher tier B1 exam. Let's begin by looking at carbon. Carbon is stored in the atmosphere in the form of carbon dioxide. The only process that removes carbon from the atmosphere is photosynthesis. This is done by all plants and produces larger carbon-based molecules that the plant uses for energy through respiration and growth. When a plant is eaten, these carbon compounds pass along the food chain, first lead to primary consumers, and then on to secondary consumers. All living things, including plants and animals, respire. This means they break down glucose, which is a carbon-based molecule, and release the energy stored within it. Respiration releases carbon dioxide back into the atmosphere. If a plant or animal dies without being eaten by another animal, it's decomposed by fungi or bacteria. These microorganisms also respire, releasing carbon dioxide into the atmosphere as well. Another process that releases carbon dioxide into the atmosphere is burning fossil fuels. In this cycle that we've built up, we can see how a change in the amount of any of these processes that's taking place will cause a change in the amount of carbon dioxide found in the atmosphere. For example, burning fossil fuels increases the amount of carbon dioxide. Deforestation will reduce the amount of photosynthesis taking place, also increasing the levels of carbon dioxide present in the air. It's important to understand how our actions affect carbon dioxide levels, as carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas so increasing the amount of it in the atmosphere will lead to global warming. Living things are made of proteins, which contain nitrogen. Nitrogen is also an important element in the DNA that's found in all living cells as well. There's a vast amount of nitrogen available in the atmosphere. However, plants and animals are unable to use this nitrogen directly. One type of living organism that can use the nitrogen in the air directly are nitrogen-fixing bacteria, living in root nodules of plants. These bacteria produce nitrates that are then absorbed by the plants that host them. Lightning is also able to convert nitrogen gas into nitrates in the soil, which can then be absorbed by plants. However the plant gets its nitrates, they use them to make proteins in order to grow. When a plant's eaten, these nitrogen-containing proteins pass along the food chain in the same way we saw carbon being done earlier. We've also seen that whenever, when either plants or animals die without being eaten, they're broken down by decomposers. The proteins that the plant or animal were made from are broken down by soil bacteria into ammonia. Nitrifying bacteria are then responsible for converting the ammonia into nitrate in the soil, which can be absorbed by plants as we've already seen. The only thing left in the cycle that we've built up is a way for the nitrogen to be returned to the atmosphere. Denitrifying bacteria fill this role, converting nitrate in the soil into nitrogen gas. Both of these cycles show how an element can be cycled between living things and the atmosphere. All living things rely on carbon and nitrogen, and they have different strategies for getting these essential nutrients. Animals get both from the food they eat. Plants photosynthesize in order to absorb carbon and gain their nitrogen from either mutualistic bacteria in their roots or by absorbing nitrate from the soil. Decomposers play a vital role in both cycles as well, breaking down living things when they die in order for their carbon and nitrogen to be recycled.